days ago. It was last Friday. And somebody that I work with who is very prophetically gifted was given a dream last night and it really affirmed what the Lord showed me in this vision. So I wanted to share it with you. Um, last Friday, I saw what looked like, I don't know, like a crane or a claw coming down and it was picking up a large cage. And when the, the cage was lifted, I could see that the earth was inside the cage. And the crane began to move the cage over top of like a pit of fire. And so when I opened my eyes, I realized that the Lord was showing me there's a, a form of judgment coming on the earth. And um, the Holy Spirit began to impress on my heart that this vision was related to what happened to the Jordanian pilot and how he was burned alive in that cage. The Lord was showing me that was a foreshadowing of what's coming on the earth. Like the Jordanian pilot, people are flying high, okay, and they think everything is normal and everything is okay, but very soon they're going to come crashing to the ground, and soon after that, they will be in an inescapable pool of fire. And the Holy Spirit kept impressing this scripture on my heart and emphasizing this. Um, it's in Luke 21, and it's verse 24. I'm sorry, it's verses 34 and 35. And here Jesus is saying, Be careful, or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing drunkenness and the anxieties of life. And that day will close in on you suddenly like a trap. Okay? For it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. And I felt like um, the Holy Spirit just kept emphasizing the whole earth, the whole earth, and how often we look around us and we see, um, you know, these beheadings and we see people being being persecuted and tortured and, and martyred for their faith in Christ. And we just, we see that as something distant, something far away. And we don't realize how close that is getting to home. And that when, when these things hit, it's going to affect everybody on the whole earth. And it's like a trap, like that, like the earth in that cage, there will be no escape. And if the friend I was telling you about, uh, he had sh he had shared that the Lord gave him a dream, and he he talked about they were standing on the beach, and and watching, and you could see land, and it was far away at first. He said, but then, after a few minutes, it they looked back, and the land was getting closer, and he said you could see like, you could see explosions, and you could see gunfire, and you knew there was like war on this land, and he said, and then a few minutes later, it was closer, and it was closer. And then he said at one point you could see the buildings and they looked like the buildings you would see in like Saudi Arabia and you could hear people speaking in Arabic and he understood that the Lord was showing him that the war and that the terrorism that is occurring in the land that seems so far away is coming and the people in his dream began to panic and they began to run to the the hotel so I just I wanted to share that with you because again I think it's a warning I think the Lord is just wanting us to remember you know this is coming we're very close to this time where um, the earth is going to experience judgment and especially America is going to you know probably see some terrorism uh, more terrorism and I want to encourage the body of Christ too you know I keep I keep hearing people who make comments about um, anyone who believes in the rapture and you know the bride of Christ has to be cleansed and you know so people who don't understand the purpose of the of the tribulation and I just I just want you as the body of Christ to remember this okay if the blood of Jesus shed on that cross satisfied the wrath of God once and for all if God turned around 
and he poured his wrath out on the body of Christ again through the church. Would that be justice? Okay, would that be justice? Even under man's law, that would be considered double jeopardy. And so often we forget that it is the blood of Jesus that cleanses us. His righteousness is imputed to us. No amount of suffering, no amount of, of uh, struggle or tribulation or even death is going to accomplish for any member of the body of Christ what only Jesus' blood has accomplished for us. We are righteous in the eyes of God because of what Jesus did for us. Okay? And when you, when you, re when you realize that and when you embrace that truth, it really does make much more sense that we will not be here to experience that wrath that was already satisfied at the cross. You know, and that's why Jesus said in that next verse in Luke 21, 35 or 36, he said, be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Okay, so just be encouraged that even though, you know, there are things coming, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of things coming on the earth that are troubling. And if we focus on those things, it could become overwhelming. Um, but what we want to focus on is Jesus Christ. We want to focus on the finished work of the cross, what he's done for us, what he's accomplished for us, that his blood is what cleanses us. There is no amount of tribulation that will ever accomplish what Jesus did for us on the cross. So please, please do not try to replace the blood of Jesus with any work. Okay? And, and you know, I, I understand. There were times I used to think that maybe we would be here for the tribulation. But when you truly understand the purpose of the cross and you truly get what Jesus has done for us and accomplished, you know it can't possibly we can't possibly be here for that tribulation because it, the purpose of it is not to cleanse the bride. The purpose of it is for God to deal with Israel. That seven years is set aside for him to deal with his people. All right. We will stand before the son of man if we're counted worthy. And the only thing that makes us worthy is his blood. Okay. So 